Hello everyone and welcome to the first part of a new process that we are going to start this month. It's the Blood Belt Hunter, which is a new character from Games Workshop, from the Ogre Army. It's relatively new because it's been a few months since it was released and David chose to paint it because it has a huge potential to make a good painting. The figure is very good. So what we are going to do in this first part is to start working on the skin, mostly to set the ambience and create the story we want to create. We are going to use these new game color paints and we are going to create a much warmer and bronzed skin. To achieve this, we are going to use mostly tones with more amount of orange and ochre tones that contain yellow. But in this case, above all, we are going to use a lot of orange to achieve the bronzed finish that we want to create. You can already see that we have started adding the first tones to the palette. In this case, we have two different tones. One is more orange and the other one is more reddish, but both are dark. You can see the difference between the two tones better in the cardboard. To start adding the base, we are going to mix both tones. And we are going to get a quite dark base, reddish but containing orange. You can see that we have covered the entire surface of the skin. The finish is quite dark because the base is a dark tone over a black primer. So we'll continue highlighting. We add new tones to the palette and in this case they are a little bit lighter. We added elf skin, beastie brown and mixing those tones with the previous ones we are going to start getting lighter tones to start creating light and shadow contrast on the skin. One of the things David liked most about this figure when he saw it and why he thinks it has a very good potential to make a very good painting is the volumetry. In this case he really liked the skin because it's very round, very circular. For example, you can see the biceps, the shoulder or the pectoral, they have very circular volumes, very spherical. And now with this dark skin tone that we have obtained mixing the previous tones, we are going to start drawing the volumetry on the skin. This is quite interesting because we can get a very interesting volumetry on the skin having very spherical volumes. Because the base tone that we have is very dark, in this new step we are going to cover a lot of surface, almost all the skin. It's very important to continue using dark tones. Remember that if we use a very light tone now, we will have to come back later. In other words, we will have to darken it. In this case, we are going to add highlights, but because we have added a very dark base, we won't need to add an excessively light tone. That is to say, we won't need a tone that contains a lot of white, we just need a tone that is lighter than the base. This way we keep the saturation.
But above all, we are very interested in how we interpret the volumetry. Because it's very spherical, we are going to think of it as very spherical volumes and we are going to simplify them. David really likes painting Games Workshop figures because the figure can change dramatically if we make a much more interesting or attractive volume interpretation than the ones we are used to seeing in the Games Workshop box arts, because their painting is flatter for the game. When we make a more complex volume interpretation, we get very good results and we see all the potential that these figures have. See that we keep some planes as shadow planes to create contrast. Once we finish this step, marking all the light planes, we are going to use this more saturated and more intense tone that we are going to add to the middle planes. See that we are adding this tone to the areas of no maximum light and no maximum shadow to make the skin more saturated, more intense. This tone would be lighter than the base tone and darker than the highlights that we have just added. It's an intermediate tone, and we take the chance to reduce the contrast. See that in some areas, we reduce the shadow surface. This way, we will also achieve a more natural contrast, because skin doesn't usually have an excessive contrast. We also take the chance to add it in this neck area, which is an area that doesn't receive too much light, but it's not a very dark area either. Because it's a more orange tone, we are also making the skin more orange. Think that the mid-tone area, that is more or less the area where we would be adding this, the middle tone area is nothing more than the part that tells us what color it is, something that we are seeing. If we want to make the skin orange, we have to add more orange in the middle tone area, because that middle orange tone is the one that is going to tell us that the skin is bronzed orange. We now add this red tone to the palette. It's a very nice tone and very interesting because as you can see, it's a pretty intense red, but it's a little bit cool. We mix it with pasty brown to get a more orangey tone. And you can see the difference on the cardboard, because it's already a much more orange tone, it's not very brown, because we have used a more intense red, much more saturated. We are going to do exactly the same as in the previous step. The difference is that now the tone is much more orange, and we are adding it much more towards the shadow area, to the darker parts that we had in the figure. This way we are going to make those areas more orange, they were slightly more reddish before.
We continue doing the same so that the figure shows us a more orange midtone. See that now the shadow tone is much more orange. We also take the chance and we add it not only in the maximum shadow areas but also in the mid-tone areas, because what we want is to make the skin look more orange. Now we are using this triple zero from Artis Opus. Some of you might be surprised by this because it's a very small brush, but it's a very good brush to paint these kind of figures because it gives us a lot of precision. It keeps the body and the tape in a very good shape and allows us to add much shorter brush strokes and load and unload less paint. The problem of using small brushes is that it's easier for the paint to dry quicker on the brush because they have less hair. But they also offer a lot of advantages. For the knuckle area, we are going to use this slightly more reddish tone. And we continue adding more intensity, more saturation to some areas. We use this slightly cooler red to enhance the light and shadow contrast because the skin is going to have warmer highlights and we are going to use slightly more yellowish ochre tones. If we add this cooler red to the shadow areas, we also create a temperature contrast. See that we take the chance to add it in the maximum shadow areas and create a very saturated and intense shadows. Something that will enhance the contrast a lot because the highlights will contain more amount of white. If the shadow tone is very saturated, very intense, we will have a very nice contrast with the highlights that contain more amount of white and are more desaturated. Now we add a much lighter tone to continue enhancing the contrast and we continue working on the highlights.
Following the general scheme that we have created on the light and shadow planes, what we are going to do now is to exaggerate the contrast even more. In the shoulder area, having a very spherical shape, we are going to add the highlights towards the center of the shoulder. And we are going to do the same on the chest, the biceps and even the arm. What we want is to increase even more the spherical shape that this anatomy has. The more spherical, circular or rounded the skin looks, the muscles look, the more natural it's going to look, because the skin never or doesn't usually have geometrical shapes, very squared or polygonal shapes with edges. And in short, if we can make it look more rounded, it will look more natural. See that we are not using a very light tone. It's very important to keep the amount of white and reduce it. That is to say, we don't want to use a tone with a lot of white now, because we will mute all the color, we will lose the saturation. In this case, because it's an ogre and the scale is a little bit bigger, even being a Games Workshop figure, that is a small figure, we can make a more complex volume interpretation on the skin. Of course, in a human type figure like a Cadia soldier, it will be much harder to make a volume interpretation on the skin like the one we are making on this figure, because we would have to simplify it more. We have made the tone a little bit more orange to smooth the previous highlight step. This way we soften the tone change. What we are going to do continuously is to highlight, to enhance the light contrast, and then with orange tones we are going to smooth the gradients. 
This way we are going to enhance the contrast and we are going to make the skin look more orange. We continue smoothing the contrast and adding highlights in the areas that are too dark, achieving a more natural finish. The more we increase the maximum light planes, the darker other areas will look, even if we thought that those areas were not very dark, because the light or dark concept depends on what we compare it with. If we continue adding highlights to the figure, some areas that we thought that were not very dark will seem darker, because the contrast will be bigger. Then there will be very dark areas that we will have to lighten a little bit more, so that the contrast is more natural, not so exaggerated. We have to take into account the material that we are painting, and in this case it's a skin, it's not metal or a material that would have a very high contrast. To smooth the tone change from the orange tone of the skin to the highlights that are going to be more yellowish or ochre, we are going to use these more saturated and more yellowish tones. In this case we are using Beastie Brown that we had in the palette from the beginning.
And this is a very clear example of how we smooth the contrast in some areas. We soften that intermediate part between the triceps and the biceps and we make it lighter so that it's not so dark, because it would never have a shadow area. We just want it to have a slightly darker tone to enhance the contrast. But we soften the shadow of the shoulder, for example, to get a more natural shadow. We are going to continue working on these neck areas, which as we said before, are not maximum light planes or maximum shadow planes. They are going to be more intermediate areas. We want to reduce the intense shadow that it has to achieve a more natural finish. We want it to be perceived as a skin or as close to it as possible. We continue enhancing the contrast. But we reduce the highlight surface more and more each time. See that we focus the highlights right in the center of the pectoral or in the center of the shoulder. This way we are going to define much more the position and the intensity of the light focus that we are creating. When we paint, the light source doesn't exist, we create it. So the height and intensity of the light focus that we create will be very important to achieve the effect that we want.
all this drawing that we are adding with the strong highlights will add much more definition. But we have to be careful not to define too much because as I said, if we do, we will get a less natural finish. The most complex thing now is not to over-exaggerate the definition and the drawing to ensure that the skin looks very natural. With those micro brush strokes that we are adding using a darker tone, we smooth so that the light that we have added looks less strong, so that the change looks less abrupt. As you can see, we are not diluting the paint a lot to do this. If we need it, we dilute the paint a little bit, but above all, what we do is to load and unload less paint. These micro brush strokes carry less paint and this helps us unload less paint. And of course, if we need to smooth it more, we add a little bit more water. To add more tone variety to the skin, so that it doesn't look the same in all the areas, we are going to use a more reddish tone, for example, in the inner part of the chest. And now, as you can see, using a much lighter and pink tone, we added salmon to the palette, we get a more pinkish tone instead of a yellowish tone, and we achieve a more natural finish. If we add very yellowish highlights, we can make the mistake of achieving a more sickly finish or very yellowish. Using this more pinkish tone for the maximum highlights or the maximum light areas, we are going to make it look more natural, because all the reddish tones will add liveliness to the skin. Now we want to exaggerate the contrast a lot to achieve a very high contrast. Then what we do is to smooth the contrast in the same way that we have done throughout the process.
See that we are smoothing using a darker yellowish tone, adding it on top of the previous highlight step. See that the maximum light area is reduced to very specific and very small areas. This way we will make it look even sweaty. And you can see that the skin is reflecting a very interesting contrast. And it's also very close to the color, the tone that we are looking for, taking the ambience into account. Bueno, finalmente vamos a terminar esta primera parte eh, haciendo un pequeño análisis sobre la anatomía, el trabajo que hemos hecho hasta ahora. En la segunda parte vamos a dejar un poco apartado el tema de la piel, luego sí que eh, voy a incluir en el proceso algunas partes más. Eh, vamos a dejar apartado el tema de la, de la piel y vamos a ver cómo pintar el, el metal de la, de la tripa, tenemos algo de la, de la cara también, de la cabeza 
y de los cuernos. Pero bueno, ahora vamos a hacer un pequeño análisis eh, sobre lo que os comentaba de por qué le veo bastante potencial a esta figura. Antes de nada os voy a explicar un poco la idea que tengo con ella, eh, la idea que quiero que cuente el personaje. En este caso le voy a situar, le voy a hacer una peana en la que va a ser una especie de mmm, pantano con barro o algo así parecido. Va a ir persiguiendo unas huellas de, de humano que, que realizaré en el barro y añadiremos algunas manchas de sangre como si fuese eh, a modo de cacería, como si estuviese persiguiendo a, a alguien que está herido. Y justo ahora al lado de la foto tenéis la versión pintada, lo que sería el boxar oficial de Game Workshop, ¿vale? En el que tenemos una pintura mucho más plana, como bueno, es habitual en el estilo más de, de Game Workshop, más de juego también. Es una pintura más plana, pero sobre todo quiero que os fijéis en pequeños detalles que son lo que hace que se vea la piel más natural. Lo voy a marcar con un color eh, fuerte para que veáis de qué zonas estamos hablando. Vamos a utilizar, por ejemplo, un rojo. Y sobre todo estas zonas son las más, eh, como os diría las eh, más visualmente más atractivas para convertir eh, la piel en una piel más real, más natural. Bueno, esas zonas son las siguientes, sobre todo, ¿vale? Tenemos una gran diferencia en lo que es esta zona de aquí del hombro, la unión del hombro con el pectoral, el hombro, eh, el pecho, perdón, el hombro y ya menos en lo que sería el brazo. ¿Vale? Porque el brazo eh, ya va teniendo una volumetría más pequeña y no nos permite hacer eh, cosas muy diferentes por la superficie. Pero sobre todo fijaos cómo lo que es la unión del hombro con el pectoral, aquí lo tenemos trabajado en luz, para que nos dé la sensación de unión de los dos músculos. Fijaos cómo aquí al separarlo con una línea, muchas veces... Eh, cuando trabajamos una piel intentamos eh, perfilarlo como un material eh, bastante diferente a algo natural, algo más, mucho más artificial y esto es lo que hace que no quede natural. Porque eh, añadimos ciertos perfilados para conseguir una mayor definición que nos convierte en la piel en algo mucho menos orgánico, ya que por ejemplo eh, la piel tiene que transmitirnos eh, esa sensación de unión. Esto lo hemos hablado en muchos procesos eh, que tenéis en la academia, como por ejemplo cuando trabajamos la piel de, de Zondir. Eh, si no lo habéis visto, os recomiendo que lo veáis porque eh, nos eh, profundizamos mucho también en estos aspectos de piel enfocado a una escala también mayor. Pero fijaos cómo aquí al trabajar eh, esta unión del hombro con el pectoral con una línea muy oscura aumentamos la sensación de que esto es menos orgánico, menos natural, ya que la piel, los músculos están unidos unos con otros. Aquí al trabajarlo de esta forma, fijaos cómo nos queda mucho más claro o nos da más, nos transmite más la sensación de unión de lo que es el hombro con el pectoral, ya que el hombro es bastante importante a la hora de pintar, comprender la anatomía, ya que el hombro se une a, a, al pectoral por la parte eh, superior, ¿vale? Entonces, eh, todo esto hace que se vea bastante más natural, como os digo. Luego fijaos también como el hombro tenemos la luz colocada muy arriba, en el pecho, en el, pecho, en el pectoral eh, lo tenemos más hacia abajo... Eh, esto realmente no es ni mejor ni peor, pero eh, sí que lo que hace es que es una interpretación, digamos, más plana. Aquí hemos concentrado la luz en el centro del pectoral para que dé la sensación de que el hombro está haciendo fuerza sobre el, sobre el pectoral, lo está hundiendo, como podemos ver aquí, lo está, está apretando... Eh, la parte del, del pectoral, del pecho, y por eso se ilumina hacia acá, porque así aumentamos la sensación de, de que los, el resto de músculos está haciendo fuerza hacia aquí y hacia aquí, aún concentrando la luz en el centro de, del pecho. Realmente a la hora de interpretar la piel, pues tenemos una cantidad infinita dependiendo de dónde situemos las luces y las sombras vamos a conseguir un acabado u otro. Esto es bastante eh, importante porque es igual que cuando hacemos un no metálico. Realmente de, 
diferentes interpretaciones de no metálico tenemos infinitas. Al final la percepción de la volumetría puede cambiar mucho o va a cambiar mucho dependiendo de dónde situemos nosotros el foco de luz y dónde situemos eh, las luces y las sombras. Por supuesto aquí estamos jugando con una luz, con un foco de luz y con un ambiente mucho más dramático, mucho más fuerte, eh, con mucho más contraste que en la otra figura que como os digo la pintura es más plana. Eh, Busca otro tipo de acabado totalmente diferente, pero fijaos como aquí, conservando esta parte oscura, que realmente esto eh, tengo que retocarlo para reducir la zona oscura. Esto vamos a intentar que quede más o menos. Más o menos así, para conseguir la sensación visual de que el propio cuerno, el colmillo que lleva colgando, nos crea sombra sobre esa parte del hombro. Incluso podremos aumentarlo más cuando pongamos algo más de luz en esta parte del eh, trapecio, porque esto creo que es, que es la zona del trapecio, o bueno, la zona baja de, del, del cuello, o la parte del cuello que une eh, con el hombro. Cuando pongamos algo más de luz ahí aumentaremos la sensación de que incluso ese colmillo está haciendo sombra sobre la parte del cuello. Así que nada, espero que os haya gustado esta primera parte con este análisis sobre anatomía que creo que es eh, fundamental y que eh, os va a gustar bastante porque eh, fijaos cómo puede cambiar rotundamente una figura eh, llevándolo hacia una pintura más compleja en el sentido de una interpretación eh, pues más compleja o más eh, con un contraste mucho más grande eh, con ese dibujo de la anatomía mucho más eh, focalizado en un foco eh, mucho más fuerte, etcétera, lo que hemos estado viendo. Así que nada, espero que os haya gustado, un abrazo a todos y nos vemos en el siguiente vídeo. ¡Adiós!